President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has congratulated the new Senate President, Goswala Pabio, and Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, on their election as uh, presiding officers of the 10th National Assembly. This followed an election in the Senate, the Sark Pabio beat former governor of Zamfara State, Senator Abdulaziz Yari, by 63 votes to 46 to met President of the Senate. At the House of Representatives, Abbas, who was the preferred candidate of the All Progressives, Congress polled 353 votes, beating his rival, former Deputy Speaker Ahmed Wasi and Aminu Jaji, who both secured three votes each. In a statement, President Tinubu personally signed on Tuesday, titled, Now Let's Get On With The Business Of The People, he said, Now being elected, in your, uh, by your peers as presiding officers and assuming the leadership of the National Assembly is a great honor that comes with a huge responsibility. And as president, I'm prepared to be transparent and to work with you, the National Assembly. Also, the newly sworn in president of the Senate and former governor of Aquaibom State, Goswell Apabio, has vowed that the 10th Senate will surpass the expectations of Nigeria in building a prosperous nation. Uh, Pabio made his vow while delivering his inaugural speech after he swore in yesterday, indicating also a readiness to work with Mr. President to better the lots of Nigerians. It is also important of note that the choosing or election of presiding officers also happened at the state level in some states. Yesterday, Right Honorable Dennis Emomotimi was elected as the new speaker of the Delta State House of Assembly and Honorable Otto Akowowo as his deputy of the 8th Assembly of the state. But with this, what Nigerians and Deltans are looking forward to is what will their emergence bring to the people? What should we look out for in laws and oversight and working with the executive? Well, an agenda setting for the 10th National Assembly and the 8th Assembly in the state is what this edition of the Big Story is all about. And we're talking about the 10th National Assembly and more like the agenda setting. And that's what we're certainly going to talk about today. We're talking about the 10th National Assembly and that of the Delta State House of Assembly, the 8th in its uh, series. And not just only that, but we're talking about agenda setting for both houses. But anyway, to help us talk about this, we have no other person but um, I rather call him Comrade, and uh, that's what I love calling him. Uh, Comrade Edewa Gedigwe is of the Value Rebet Center and also um, the state coordinator of the Transition Monitoring Group. Uh, good morning, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Good morning, watch us out there. Well, anyway, I'll also use this opportunity to congratulate you uh, for the World um, Peace Ambassador Award that you recently uh, clinched or was honored with in uh, Ghana. Uh, tr we truly, really. I congratulate you on that. Thank you very much. Well, anyway, let's just start uh, with the business of the day. And uh, definitely, uh, before we go into agenda setting of um, the 10th National Assembly and that of the 8th of the state, I, I, I want us to first look at uh, how it played out yesterday. Many were expecting more of uh, what happened in 2015, or rather a repeat of what happened with 2015 with Sareke Ayakubu Dogara uh, scenario. Uh, because prior to the elections uh, yesterday, there were a strong opposition to the choice of the ruling party preferred candidate. And uh, with the pure knowledge that the seven opposition parties, especially in the House of Representatives, um, had a combined total of 181 members against 178 of uh, the ruling party. And th there was even uh, more of the strongest shock uh, knowing that um, those that were even opposed to Abbas ended up giving him almost uh, five, 353 of uh, the 359 votes because we know one other member died two months after the election. And the uh, sad one that he was not also sworn in yesterday would have made it almost 360. But, but my question is, were you surprised with what happened yesterday? Um, I'm talking about it going the world to the party. I'm talking of the ruling party. And uh, why did we not even see more of uh, the drama we were expecting yesterday? The only melodrama we saw was when um, no other person but Abu, Senator Abu, stood up to nominate uh, Yari, and we had Mohammed Mugunu 
uh, Bruno APC not uh, kicking against that. And we had shouts of no, no, no uh, by members of uh, the Senate indicating their support for him to also nominate Harry. Apart from that mellow mid-drama, we did not get any other drama. So those two questions is what I'm asking first. Were you surprised it went the way of the ruling party with their preferred candidate? And why were there no more drama than we used to see that normally accompany such elections? Okay, first, thank you for having me. And let me congratulate the, the presiding officers mm. of the both uh, yeah. houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives, and also our own state mm. uh, speaker and deputy speaker mm. who were elected by their peers yesterday. Congratulations yeah. to them. And of course, congratulations to Nigerians because it shows clearly that democracy is thriving gradually in this country. And it's taking root. It's taking its root. So then, of course, when the roots is probably taking, it would naturally be a fruit upward. So that's what we're looking at. Yes, am I surprised? I'm not really surprised. Like I said, it also shows that democracy is getting entrenched in our body politics. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised because majority is also of the essence. They are getting matured you know, year in, year out. And I'm also not surprised, too, that uh, the APC at the National, you know, pull the strings because f the prior to that yesterday, yeah. we saw the horse trading, the yeah. intrigues, mm -hmm. the maneuvering mm -hmm. that ensued, and a lot of drama, the dramas, meetings. you know, meetings, mm -hmm. nocturnal meetings, and what have you. And that's also to tell you that, yes, democracy is getting its root gradually. You know, it's a game of intrigues. Yes. It's a game of maneuvering. It's a game of persuasion, lobby, and all of it. So all that had its fair share throughout the period preceding yesterday. But having said that, yes, principal officers have emerged. That is, of course, the senator, I mean, the senior president and the mm -hmm. deputy has emerged. All those presiding Yeah, officers. all the presiding officers. Other presiding officers need to come on board. Mm -hmm. So that will be seen in the coming days. Um, for the National Assembly, yes, uh, the clamor by many Nigerians the, of the Christian, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, aspect were of the view that the senior president should be a Christian. Having had the president, the Muslim, the vice president, the Muslim, mm -hmm. the next high-ranking officer, the number three should. officer in the state, I mean, the nation, should be a Christian at least. So Nigerians expected that that thought, that idea, shouldn't have been challenged by even a Muslim person ordinarily. But because it's a game of interest, and of course, nobody has... A, you know, the right to also stop another person. And, and funny enough, it's our constitution. It's, of course, it's, it's a constitutional thing. We saw uh, uh, Yari, the former uh, uh, Zamfara State governor, also throwing his hat into the ring. And that was clearly, you know, welcomed by all. But true to the, you know, the practice of the democracy, they went to the pool yesterday, and of course, we saw the outcome. Mm. So, and you saw where Yari also went to hug Embrace. Uh, embrace him and of course he said yes it come and gone then the business of legislation to begin so that's the majority I'm beginning to see in our body polity and our democracy now having established that it is now most important to set agenda yeah. for the senate for well, the we'll, national we'll, assembly we'll, we'll come to that agenda setting because that's mm. basically what uh, this edition of course, today is more centered on. But but I, I still want us to look at, um, anyway, well, let's just call it um, the lighter side of all of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and that's why I, I talked about uh, the drama that did not really unfold. And, and you, you say it's because of the maturity yes, that right. seems to be unfolding yeah, gradually. Uh, in our democratic process. But, but as much as we talk about that very maturity, I, I'm still a bit surprised because naturally, the APC is a ruling party and they came out with their candidates more than a month ago mm -hmm. on who they prefer uh, to run uh, the presiding office in the National Assembly. And, but, but, but we saw strong opposition to that of a name we mentioned. Yet, yeah, uh, you, you made clear indication that, well, we had the Muslim as uh, president and the Muslim vice president, so it's only natural that a Christian will be the third uh, most pe powerful person when it comes to political ranking in the country. But, but my next question is, uh, why do you feel there were even opposition to some of the preferred candidates 
of the ruling party because we saw stiff oppositions. We even got to an extent that it, it almost degenerated into name callings, especially among the ruling party. Why do you feel, feel that there was really strong opposition to all these names that finally won it at the end of the day? No, it's natural. It's only natural. Every good thing yeah. will have, you know, a stiff opposition. Like I always tell people, gold is not found in the surface. Mm. You need to dig deep. Yeah, of course. So for where you have 109 senators, 360 House of Reps, mm. members, members, all in one national assembly. And different political parties. Different political parties, and one man becoming the number one among all of these put together. Because, you know, he's the chairman of the national assembly, for instance. Yes. So he's going to pretend over all of these you know, individuals from different backgrounds, that position will, will be a most contested position. So, name calling, yes, politics is a game of outwitting one another. That's what the, poly, the game is meant for. Mm. So, you don't want to put yourself into politics and you are, you are scared of, you know, being talked about, being your image being tarnished here and there. No. No. Now, you, you, you can say more of that even with the current president that we have. There is nothing that was not said about him. But today is the president and is you know doing his own job as a president. So for me, all of that should help to strengthen God's will Akbabio, the senator God's will Akbabi as it is, to knowing that look, he didn't got, get this office on a platter of ease. That means there is a high demand on him to deliver. And in his inaugural speech, you said what he said, mm -hmm. that they are going to surpass what you yes, know the previous senate has always done. So it then means. He has even given himself a target, which Nigerians are yearning for. And for Nigerians, we don't want to hear stories of, oh, okay, we have just come, we want to... The Nigerians are not, they are not ready for such things any longer. But good thing, he has already said by his own mouth that, look, we are going to surpass what we made. So by that, we want to hear in the coming days, at least by today, we should hear... Either they are going on recess to go and get set and come back for full business of the day, or they are kicking off right away. For me, there will even be no need for recess. This is the time that Nigerians are waiting for. Of course, Tinubu came in on the first day. He made they some very pronounced. remarkable pronouncement. And in the few days that followed, he has made some appointment and all that. That's what governance should be. It is not when you get into the office, you not think of how you want to go and do window dressing here and there and try to get put. It then means that. You were not ready for the place have been issue. So we are saying that, yes, in the next one or two weeks, we should have all other principal officers put in place. And the business of the day. Business of the day begins. And we see Mr. President sending the list of, you know, uh, it yeah, would be yeah, ministers that, 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 to, to them for screening. That, that, that's where I'm going to. And, and talking about the business of the day, let, let's really go there, which is more like the agenda setting for uh, the, the 10th National Assembly mm -hmm. and also that of uh, the Delta State House of Assembly. Now, I know Nigerians, like you said, will be waiting for names of ministers, nominees, and uh, that's the next agenda, both for that of the president, the executive, and also uh, the legislative arm of uh, governance. And, and not just getting the names, but you will also be sending them uh, to the 10th National Assembly for screening, yeah. and, uh, which is more like kick-starting business in itself. Sure, sure. But one form of screening Nigerians are not comfortable about is take a bow. And we've seen that many times, especially when um, the nominees are former members of uh, the legislative arm of government. We've seen that a lot of times, and it's now almost becoming a norm. Now, let's look at the quality of the screening process uh, we're expecting from the 10th National Assembly. And do you see them departing from this ugly tradition of take a bow rather than intense screening? It has, they have to depart from take a bow and go. Nigeria has moved past that era where you say take a bow and go, maybe because the person was one time a governor, former governor, oh. former senator, oh. or a minister, then you take a bow and go. Nigerians don't want to see that. From the civil society, we are setting agenda, particularly with regards to transition monitoring group at the national and at the state level. Our next line of action is, you know, engaging the recent, I mean, these new executives, they, of course, the, the, the Senates and the House of Reps and the State House of Assembly members engaging them based on their manifesto that they told Nigerians. 
their commitment with Nigerians that they shared during their campaigns mm -hmm. that, of course, brought them into office. We want to monitor how they are in tandem with all of those things. So by that, we don't expect anything less than our legislators engaging the would-be you know, members of the executive of either at the national than at the state level. By that, I mean we want a proper grilling of anybody that will be an executive at any arm of our administration. By that, we'll be able to assess these people. Mm. Are these people coming with content? Are they ready for the job? Or it is that compensation, political party compensation mm. that Nigerian politics has been used to yes. in the time and, past. And that have not delivered. That have not delivered. Mm. Because if you don't change your approach, mm. it then means you are going to get the same outcome. Nigerians are in a hurry to see a better outcome. Not those, you know, ring marolling that we've had mm. in 24 years. Now we are on our threshold to 28 years of unbroken democracy. So we want everything to start on a sound footing not on a shaky ground. Now, you can give it to the president for now, for the few days he has spent in office, barely 15 days now in office, a lot of some actions have taken place. That's what we want to see. We want to see every waking day, Nigerians have a better hope of a better Nigeria. Yeah, That's yeah, what we're I, looking I, for. I, I want us to really break it down. That's why, funny enough, I start with the issue of screening. And then I'm talking of a better hope. Now, b b because I want us to first look at the first legislative job of the day, mm. both for the executive and uh, the legislative arm. And that is the issue of persons that will be screened on account of being mm. part of the executive to drive the vision and mission of this administration. Now, talking about if they have the power, do, do you see them also demanding from Mr. President the proposed portfolios of these ministers? Because that's what Nigerians have almost clamored for, that if you're sending the names of the ministerial names to all the National Assembly for screening, portfolios accompanying these names should come. So they know what to screen them on. So do you see this happening and changing us from where we now would have a lawyer as a minister for works and power? Should that not be the, the order of the day? And do you also see this national, 10th National Assembly demanding for portfolios to follow uh, from Mr. President on account of who becomes ministers? Before we go to the National Assembly demanding, members demanding for portfolios, yeah. Mr. President should understand mm. the yearnings and cries of Nigeria. Okay. We've tongue-lashed that process many a times. Mm. He's a Nigerian. Mm. He's been here. Yeah. So it's not new to him. Mm. That Nigerians want to see a name of a minister sent to the National Assembly with a portfolio attached yeah. so that there will be deliberate questions. Mm to assess the competent, of course, the capability of the person for the office. Okay. And if the Senate did not see him as worthy of such a, a office, mm. then he's not, it's not cleared. Suits to be. It's not cleared in that process. Mm. Then the request for Mr. President to so send another name that will pass, you know, the, the, the test of Nigerians represented by those members at the material time. So, it's no point even now saying, oh, the Senate needs to demand. But, 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 we are demanding we, we, as Nigerians. We, we are basically talking about the 10th National Assembly. Yes. And we're looking at a departure from what it used to be. No, absolutely. Yes. Absolute. But I'm saying here that Nigerians, I am a Nigerian, you are a Nigerian. The cry out there is simply that once you are sending the names of your nominee for screening and confirmation, at the National Assembly, be it at the State Assembly, attach the portfolio so that there will be proper assessment, there will be proper grilling of the individual, yeah. you know, in tandem with the office is occupying, yeah. whether it's conversant with what obtains in that office or not. If it's conversant, then it's given a nod to go and we begin to see his performance. Yeah. But if it's not conversant, you know that it's not a man ready for that job. Mm -hmm. So he stepped down for somebody else that is competent. Don't also forget, I'm saying this because we've heard Mr. President said he's going to put square peg in square holes. So he said. He said so. Mm -hmm. And if he has said so, we don't expect anything less. So we expect a clear departure from what used to be when you bundled names to the National so, Assembly. So you started with the names the and names portfolio. And the portfolio. 
so that the National Assembly, the, the Senate will be, you know, abreast of the what people they are coming to screen mm -hmm. and which portfolio. So they are able to also arrange their question in order to assess these people. Because screening is purely an assessment, mm -hmm. you know, you call it capacity. Easy, a capacity assessment, uh, you know, process where Nigerians will see. And I also want to recommend that the screening should be live. Mm -hmm. Nigeria, we want to partake in it. It should be live screening so we can also see beyond what the Senate is doing because they are the one vested with the power to so do at that mm. material time. Mm. But Nigerians want to see, just like as we watch, mm. you know, the election live yesterday, mm. we want to see most live activities of what's happening okay. so that we can really, you know, assess properly. Not you just do some things in the closet and you come to tell us what we didn't see. Don't tell us what we want to hear. Tell us what obtains properly. That's what Nigerians are yearning for in the coming days. So we don't want to see anything less. I, I believe they are also hearing what we're saying. Well, anyways, I know they are, and I know you also guys are listening at home, but I will plead with you, just as I also plead with you, that we need to go on a break now. And then when we come back, we'll continue our review. And more like, even more like an agenda setting uh, for the 10th National Assembly, and that of the 8th uh, House of Assembly. I'm talking of Delta State House of Assembly. What should be the process, especially as we look towards uh, what will be, not just of the principal offices of uh, both uh, the, the national or the federal and state, but also what they should have to do to ensure that we truly believe that there should be a change of narrative, especially when it comes to legislative function. That's what this show is all about. Let's go on a break. <laughs>